I'm sitting with my good man, uh, Deshaun Drummond, Double D as I call him. Uh, we are at Bakari Grill in Washington Township. Uh, this is my favorite restaurant uh, in the area. As you know, we've shared a number reason. of lunches, right? You and I have gotten together here a number of times and, uh, and shared ideas. Always building. Shared some of the challenges that we both faced uh, at the same time. Um, and so you and I have been talking a lot about social media over the course of the last few weeks specifically. Mm -hmm. uh, and I have a ton of respect for you know, your acumen and what you've done so far in your career social media wise. Likewise. Uh, thank you, man. Appreciate Likewise. That, you I know. mean, you, we, 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 I think we clicked, man, from the start because, you know, when I heard your story when I was working for Lexus, I just said, man, this is a guy who has... Uh, gone through, been super successful, gone through challenges, and continues to be successful today. So this is a guy that I just want to hang around. And, and you know, I wasn't able to really hang around you then, but, you know, but we kept that relationship, we kept that relationship going. You know, that sure. was a conscious decision on our part. And, and I remember the first time meeting you at Lexus because when you approached me and when I was walking through the showroom, <clears throat> And I saw you coming at me. It's kind of hard to miss Double D. Mm. You know, Double D is tall, dark, and handsome, but he also puts it together well. You know, with the I don't suit. I'm not the handsome, but, but I'm married, so I don't have no, to be but handsome you anymore. You don't have to worry about no. that. But but the truth is, like when you were approaching me, there was a presence to you, and I identified that right away. You know, and so I remember that first day on the showroom, um, and I knew that you were somebody after talking with you that had their head on straight and that had bigger plans in store. And I didn't know what our relationship was going to be, but I knew that we were going to have one. Mm. And uh, that's probably four or five years now, right? Yeah, that was 2014. 2014, five so years. it's like five years Almost now. Five years, yeah. Uh, that we maintained a relationship. And yeah. it was, you know, through social media, it was a text, it was a phone call here and there. Yeah. Um, and so when I called you uh, to sit down and talk about social media and some of the things that we're trying to accomplish uh, with the Sandy Cerami brand, and I know what you've done with your brand, uh, you've worked one-on-one -on -one with salespeople mm -hmm. uh, and you want them to build business already working with social media. Tell me a little bit about mm -hmm. uh, what that experience was like for you. Um, it, it showed me most industries are not ready. Yeah. And, you know, I was very early to go to the auto industry and say, well, this is what we need to do, guys. We need to turn you guys human uh, because no one wants to interact with an entity right you know and I and that's what people aren't getting people want to interact with people and so when they view you as the dealership you're not gonna build a connection on social media and I'm just talking about social media I'm not talking about your other business and marketing strategy I'm talking just social media yep. they don't want to interact with your dealership they want people and um, they love stories too like everybody loves a great story and yeah. it's such a simple way to share a great story like mm -hmm. there's no cost to opening up a Facebook account or a, a, an IG account or a Twitter account LinkedIn I mean you sure. know if you want to pay for some of the premium services you can but sure. you know you were teaching the salespeople how to leverage their their own stories yeah. all right their own interactions uh, and connections with their prospects and their customers in a way that didn't cost them anything no. and the, no. the exponential reach that that not only they're able to gain but the dealerships sure. are able to gain uh, I think was an important and, and, piece. and ultimately it's personal branding because if you don't have a representative let's say you don't you're progressive right you don't have flow mm -hmm. now you which means I'm gonna pay flow put my uh, equity in her to connect with my audience right pay, you know dealerships don't have that luxury yeah. to have a personality yeah so your extension is to you know, people is, are your salespeople, are your employees. So when you start to have them create their own personal brands within your business brand, it builds your business brand. Fact. And they just, it was just very early. I don't, I don't think it, it's still. We haven't seen anyone doing it. I haven't no, seen no, one person. Nobody's doing it the right way yet. Not yet. Um, and it's funny because we're both big fans of Gary Vee. Yes. Uh, Gary Vaynerchuk. Huge. Uh, I think he's a genius. Absolutely. You know, one of the ironies for me is that um, I have been a big Jim Rohn fan. Mm -hmm. uh, not Jim Rohn, the sportscaster. Yes. But Jim, Jim Rohn, Rohn the, the businessman, the philosopher, mm -hmm. and genius. Mm -hmm. uh, and, you know, he used to talk about the fact that, you know, who you show to the marketplace is very important. 
and, and Gary Vaynerchuk took that and turned it flat out on its head, mm. where, you know, he uses some pretty salty language on a regular basis. Uh, I'm okay with it because we hear it on a regular basis. Yeah, it's authentic. Uh, in our business, it's him. It's, him. it's, it's the him. original, mm -hmm. and it's the essence and fabric and texture of who he is as a person. Mm -hmm. uh, he's got such a dynamic uh, um, uh, message and a dynamic way of delivering it to the marketplace. Absolutely. But he took that and turned it into a, a franchise. His intelligence, his authenticity, mm -hmm. turned it into a, a tremendous franchise and brand. Mm -hmm. And I know there's folks out there that will give him a hard time about the language, but he uses that to his advantage. Okay. Yeah. And he said if he didn't curse, he'd probably have more, you know, two, three times the followers. But it wouldn't be him. Correct. And, and what I, there's so much I've learned from him. And, you know, we, we both, like, consume his content uh, you know, a lot of it, yeah. And but one of the things he says is, "Do what I do." Right. You know, and I think like he's the biggest practitioner of his advice. Is we we talked last week on the phone about brand versus selling, right. or brand versus you know, in the online world, there's two ways people are connecting with people. Right. There's branding, and then there's selling. Now, for a long time, probably since email came and Google AdWords came in the 2000s and then it became click funnels in the, you know, the recent years, but it was try to predict the behavior through, you know, Google mm -hmm. um, and then try to capture that person, offer them something and try to get them into, try to capture their information, squeeze pages, yep. squeeze their email out, put them on a drip campaign, yep. so I can continually. Now, the di the difference is, Gary V is big on branding, yep. which is, it's it takes that whole thing from you being that top three sponsored listings on Google, to you being the first, second organic on Google. That's a game changer. It really is. Right down in there. Because you, right to you can't pay for that. Us. Yeah. Fact. Yeah. Fact. And, and I, I tell you the things that I'm learning as you and I continue to talk about this. Um, you know, he, he doesn't care about how many followers he has on a day-in, a day-out basis. As a matter of fact, I see him with the, the verbal smackdown whenever he gets that question, how do I get more followers? And you know, that question, if every one of us was to put the, you know, yeah. what's on our mind up on our forehead, it would be like, how do I get more followers? But the truth of the matter is- His he answers says, are so colorful when people ask him that right, too. Because like, his answers are ready. simple. Like, yeah. keep delivering content, content, and more content. Mm -hmm. And the more relevant and higher quality content you deliver, the more followers you're going to end up garnering as a result of it. It's really a pretty simple formula. And you, you know what's, not to cut you off, but you just really gave me a thought when you said that. You know why I think people don't want to do that? It's because the marketplace tells you if you're good or not. Oh. You get what I'm saying? I, I, I hear you 100%. So how many people we know that spend tons of money on advertising, right? Tens of thousands of dollars. Hundreds of thousands. Hundreds millions. of thousands. Millions of dollars and do not actually know that that particular newspaper ad you did was garbage. Correct. That that commercial you did was terrible. Yeah. It brought you no results. When you focus on branding and content and you go deep with it for a year, two years, and you don't get any connection, your content's probably not good. The market speaks to you. The market speaks to you. That is it. Whereas if I could pay this and I get even a little response, like when I was doing a social media for the dealership, you had companies that would post for them, that they would put on a retainer that would post for them, and because they and they it would get no engagement, right? But because they might have saw uh, an increase in click throughs, right? And they, they might have had people clicking, right? How it, they're judging the wrong thing, correct? Is the point, and it goes back to what you were saying about how many followers do I have when people ask that question. You're judging the wrong thing, and you should you, 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 you should be judging engagement based on your content. Absolutely, not that, that word is so powerful for me today, and I think for anybody that's paying attention, uh, that word engagement becomes critical. Yeah, because um, I listened to Gary, and Gary said on on one of uh, the videos that he put out is that stop worrying about the followers you don't have, 
and start engaging with the ones that you do have, like in a meaningful way. When somebody posts on, you know, an IG post that they post a comment, like get involved and have some level of interaction at a meaningful level with these folks. And it's something that I've concentrated on. And look, I'm, I'm like, you know, struggling back and forth. So we all do. You know, at the end of the day, you know, is my content relevant enough? I continue to get engagement from the people that have stayed engaged, and that has driven me to, to continue to develop more content and share it. Um, I see a lot of folks. We talk, go back to the automotive sector. You know, one of the one of the epidemic problems in society today, and I see it. I have a 17-year-old son, Patrick, 14-year-old little girl named Anna, a little lady. She's not a little girl mm-hmm. anymore. And my wife Mary and I are constantly preaching to them don't worry about what everybody else is thinking they're so busy at that age and we've done this for for decades and generations everybody's so busy trying to be cool yeah. that they're not worried about or concentrating on getting exceptionally good or great at something mm. all right they're worried about what everybody else is saying and it goes back to what Gary V says I can't hear you puts his fingers mm. in his ears and says whether it's good or bad I can't hear you. I'm doing He really it doesn't care. He doesn't. He doesn't. <laughs> There's magic to that, though, right? It sure is, man. Yeah. I wish I could be that. I wish I could just not care. You know, he's like, you get mad, you post something, yeah. it doesn't get any likes, and you're like... See, he has so many different mindsets working together that are all positive. Yeah. Like, one mindset is, uh, don't care what people think. Another mindset is care about engagement those kind of contradict each other yeah because if you care about engagement you, you care about what people think but then his overall mindset is i could always fix it with more content right so it's like more content more content all right that post didn't get what all right there's another one coming there's another one coming there's another one coming so in that producing content at scale you don't necessarily look at the fact that post got two likes but this one got 80 this one right. got you know so he just he just really gets it, man. Keeping score becomes a big challenge for all of us, right? And we're keeping score, especially on ourselves. And look, I think anybody that's in the world of, of um, social media and has the, uh, I'll call it the pressure. I don't really feel the pressure, but there's a, a, a degree of pressure yeah, to develop that content on a consistent basis. Mm-hmm. And it takes work. And it's not easy to do. There are some days where I really struggle to pull that content out of you know, my brain or out of my heart mm-hmm. uh, and share it with folks in a way that's going to impact or, or have meaning. Mm-hmm. And he talks about that as well. He says, like, you just got to keep delivering it. You mm-hmm. know, some of them are going to fall flat and some of them are going to be five run home runs. But sure. you have to keep developing that content because there's an absolute unquenchable thirst for it in the marketplace today. Would sure. you agree? I agree 100%. Um, the organic content is much tougher to build. Mm-hmm. And so I was doing social media marketing for a music artist. Mm-hmm. So we started from scratch. And so a lot of people put, put when it comes to video marketing, they don't know where to necessarily put the money. Mm-hmm. They're boosting posts. They're doing you, you, you boosting posts and and doing uh, when you scroll down IG, it gives you the option to boost your IG right. post too. Right. Um, that might not be the terminology on IG, but that's the terminology they, on they Facebook. Promote. It's promote. promote. Exactly. So when you're doing that, you're not actually using the advanced ads manager, which is the back office of Facebook right. ads manager where it lets you build audiences and it lets you really get very deep on demographics that you're going to target. Mm-hmm. And so I said, all right, so what do we want to do to create? Because you're building from scratch. What you want to do is you want to look at the organic content that you put out, which you want to do as much as you possibly can um, as um, you want to look at the the engagement there, and you want to take and you want to take a couple posts a month and put money behind them. Right. But you only want to put money behind the posts that you can clearly see are doing well. Right. You don't want to experiment with like okay, let's say I put a video out every single day. Right. Okay. And because of my organic that I have, you already have an organic 
fan base right, right now. Mm -hmm. Sandy Cerami has X number of people that love him right now. Right. So now, let's say I put We need out, more, by the way. So we do, you we, are, we need we're, new, we, we're looking for you. Yeah, you're, you're late to the show, no but doubt. it's not too late. Uh, but you have this group of people who are going to watch. So now, let's say you start out with everything you put out. And I'm just calling out one platform. Let's say everything you put out, you start posting on Facebook, gets you 100 views. I'm just mm -hmm. making a number up. Now, that's organic, okay? You're seeing next day, 100 views. Third day, 100 views. You drop something on the fourth day, it gets 300 views. Right. Pay attention to that because that's a better video, the marketplace says, they spoke. than 100 views. Yep. Um, so now what you do is you watch, you watch, keep putting out. Now you decide, all right, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to put a little money to capture people. Now you look and you see that 300 or if that 500, right. you put money behind that one. And you target it towards, and you could we could go very deep on targeting, but you just, and to the best of your ability, target to people who are like the people who right. liked it already, whether it be, you know, whoever you're targeting. And you get it in front of more eyes. Right. And you, what'll happen is you can invite people once they like your content. If they like your page, you can hit a button that says, I mean, if they like your video, you can hit a button that says invite to like my page. Right. So the more and more you do that, you start to get more people liking your page. And here's the thing. Followers is not the name of the game, right. but followers who are following you because they saw something that they liked. Absolutely. And then you invited them to like the page, and they liked it. Are that's what you want? It's so they're liking for the right that. reasons. Yeah, double D. It's so important to hear that because, like, I want people to know out there that where I sit right now, and I, I want to be the guinea pig for folks that are sitting on the sidelines right now that feel they have something to say, that mm -hmm. feel they have a message to share. Um, I, I, first of all, I want you to like take action. You know, be courageous and just go out there and do it. A lot of people out there just sticking around, getting ready to get ready, and never go. Right, and so I sit right now with like a thousand plus or minus followers on a consistent basis over the last couple of weeks. I watch, like, take a completely different flavor from Gary V. Go to like a Grant Cardone, right? Grant, mm. Grant's a completely different animal, and his authenticity, while it's a complete departure from where Gary is, uh, is original. Like mm. Grant is who he is. There's, I don't think there's any mask with Grant. No. I think Grant is exactly who he says he it's is. True to himself. Yeah, and I respect that because um, he doesn't hide behind any mask or any veil. Mm -hmm. uh, he goes after it. Now, he's got um, over a million followers on multiple different platforms. Uh, his level of engagement is a little bit different than Gary's. Gary's got, you know, multi-millions on multiple different platforms. But the fact of the matter is, is they both create content at a absolutely voracious pace. And so what I what I want people to understand is that like that's what we're all chasing right now is if you're looking to build that brand, you've got to continue to develop content. You can't just mm -hmm. put, you know, one or two pieces out a week, it's not gonna get it done. Mm -hmm. Even one or two pieces a day I'm finding is not getting the job done. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. but those are the things you gotta do. Because that's what engages. And you said it, they've got to be people that are that are following you because they like the content that you're delivering yeah. in the marketplace. Yeah. Yeah. And, 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 you know, we talked a little bit about this on the phone last week, Gary V's brand versus Grant Cardone's brand. Totally different approaches. Totally Both different approaches. Successful with yes. different approaches. Super successful. Talk a little bit about that in terms of, of uh, Gary versus Grant. I, I'm, it really, my opinion is SEO versus uh, search engine optimization versus Google AdWords. Right. One is I'm going to sell you something now. Right. And one is, I'm going to make you trust me for the next 10, 15 years. Right. And then you trust me so much when I drop a shoe and say, hey, guys, if you want to buy it, check it out. They'll yep. probably buy it. Right. When, I, when I launch a wine brand, sending wine to your house, you're probably going to want to buy it because right. I'm not a hard sell. I'm giving you so much, giving you so much, and you're waiting, that, you're waiting for me to basically ask you to buy something, and I don't. Right. Like, Gary... Yeah, when even when he launches his books, he's not really asking the people to buy them. His brand just is so huge that he's going to be a bestseller. But Grant Cardone is very 
hey, I'm doing this, buy a ticket. I'm, I'm you know, uh, grant capital, invest with me, yeah. you know. Yeah. So he, he's going to monetize early. Right. He's going to take that audience and monetize early. And both are successful. I think it just all depends on what it is you're trying to achieve. Right. What's the flavor that, that you're comfortable with and, and what fits with your brand? I see yeah. a lot of wannabes out there. Um, that's one thing I, I've really committed uh, early on in my career was I don't want to be like anybody else. I want to just be me. Yes. Um, and you have enough to be you. I mean, we all do. Every one of us does. We all do. Every one of us does. And getting clear on who you are mm -hmm. becomes critical. There's a lot of exercises you can go through to like, kind of get to that point. But I will say about both of those guys, they both are who they are. Yeah. And their brands represent that specifically. There's a texture to each one of their brands. You, know, yeah. you can feel it. Like when they're on screen and they're speaking, you can feel their brand and their culture that they uh, have built around their brand uh, as a texture. You can feel it sure. off the screen with both of those guys. And, 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 and Gary Vee makes tons of money. So mm -hmm. when you look at, he just doesn't monetize that audience. Correct. You get what I'm saying? And, and, and people, well, how do you make money? He packs events. People will pay money to come see him speak. He probably makes a hundred to, to two hundred thousand dollars per speaking engagement. Um, he, you, you know, as a speaker, is Grant Cardone as successful? I don't know. I don't know what Grant does. I don't Grant know. I mean, does. you just put like twenty-five to thirty thousand people into the uh, Miami Marlins Park in Miami. I was down Did there. He? I checked out the event. I went down there really to take notes, to be honest with you, copious mm -hmm. notes. Mm -hmm. uh, and I did, and I was blown away by the scope of what he was able to produce. Um, I, I will tell you, because I understand where you're coming from. You're saying, mm -hmm. you know, one is more of a pull approach, and sure. one is more of a push-pull approach. Mm -hmm. Because Grant does pull uh, on, a, on a fairly strong level. Uh, he, but he, we, when you think about it, how long has Grant, Grant been developing his brand, too? 20-plus years that I know. Right. You know, so he's I not going to, to his NADA uh, workshops, mm. you know, uh, 20 years ago mm -hmm. uh, and being impressed. He's, he's come he's through the trenches. He has, and he's evolved. His brand has evolved over the course, really over the last seven, eight, nine years. Mm -hmm. uh, he talks about it in one of his books. Mm -hmm. Um, and Gary's brand has evolved too. Like I love to go back and see the early stuff mm -hmm. that Gary Vee was doing, and it was it was so raw and authentic that it's got a charm to it sure. as you look back now yes, retrospectively. It does. Yes, it does. Uh, and it's it's a lesson for everybody else that's out there. Like if you're looking for what's it going to look and feel like when you're just getting started, go watch early Gary Vee Wine Library TV .com episodes, and it's there. Yeah, yeah. You know, and he doesn't hide from the you. awkwardness, the the getting yeah, used to talking on it. camera. Yeah, all of it. All yeah, of it. but it comes it comes through. But I think I don't want to give an impression that if you're just starting out, you don't have the traction that Grant Cardone has. You don't have the 25 years. Absolutely. You can't approach the game the way he approaches Correct. it. Correct. Well, I'm going to be like Grant, and I'm going to monetize. He people. can monetize. They're called posers. It, amen. You know, and you just said, yeah, you're one of and fakes. Yeah. You, know? you yeah. might say, well, Grant's doing it. He's monetizing his audience. But Grant spent, he spent two and a half decades yeah, fact. building his brand, yeah. building trust, getting people to know this guy knows what he's talking about. Yeah. You know, so in the new, new era of people starting brands now, starting brands in the last two, three, five years, your approach needs to be very, you don't have a brand yet. Right. Essentially, every, we all have a brand, but you don't, to the marketplace, have what, what, what they have. And I, I think I really see the new branding being very um, less salesy. Yeah. You know, I, I, see the, I see the new branding being very much reality TV yeah. style. Um, Let me be me. Yeah. Right, you be you, I'll be me. And, and, and if you can... If you can deliver um, the message and the content with that level of, of uh, authenticity mm -hmm. and originality, you win. Yes. You know, it's, you know, it's funny. Gary said something. He's like, for, for those of you out there that haven't realized it yet, like the internet won. So stop yeah. fighting it. Like, you know, uh, for those. They're still those, fighting it. Yeah, the TV executives, like they discovered almost by accident how um, incredibly explosive the potential was for reality TV, mm. right? And and the folks like you and me and like Gary Vee early on and Grant, anybody else that's got uh, access to a camera and a microphone, like we can leverage the same platforms uh, social media wise and deliver the same level of punch but it takes time. Yeah. It takes time. There's we don't have no the power that they do. Because but. there's no machine giving you the like we if you used to cook and you wanted your own cooking show, networks controlled the distribution. Right. 
you had to buy you, you had to be on a set. Bingo. You, you just said the key word. Yeah. You had to buy it. So if you yeah. didn't have a big budget, you didn't get any share no of way. voice. But today, the currency is your content. Amen. The currency is not just your budget or your Amen. dollars and cents. It's your content. Mm -hmm. um, there's like, as I've now gotten into IG, because I thought IG was like for the 14-year-old pimple-faced yep. kid yep. who was scanning your groceries at the Everybody did. Line. You know, little did I know. And, and I've just recently discovered the power of IG. And there's, there's a, a couple of guys over in Great Britain that have um, a brand called Champions of Mind. And I'm watching these guys really closely because they've blown it up pretty quickly over a short period of time. And wow. they came from nothing. Like these are dudes that were sleeping on mattresses two and a half years ago. Okay. And now they're rolling around in Bentleys and Land Rovers. And they're traveling all over the globe right Man. now helping people. Uh, and, and that's an important point. Um, we talk about so much about the... the um, income that's created or the wealth is created with these guys that have been tremendous uh, brand and content developers. But the truth is, is if you talk to a guy Vee, like he genuinely wants to help people. He does. Grant Cardone, I, I really believe he genuinely wants to help people. He does. And, and so if you're coming from a perspective of you want to help people uh, and you're authentic and you're genuine and it's real, yeah, I, I think, think that people that's get it. I think people get it. And, and you got to have, like, I guess you would call it the it factor. Yes. You know, and people, because when you're on camera, and what I love about Gary Vee, he says, look, you might not be great for camera. Right. You, you, maybe your personality doesn't come through. Maybe you're a great writer. Maybe you're a great, you know, speaker, mm -hmm. do audio. But some way, shape, or form, you can get your message across to, in the best way. But when you, when you look at the, like, you, I, people just know real. Right. I think, like, it goes, when you're scrolling through tons of stuff, you're looking, we become desensitized. Fact. You know? So yeah. it, you, you're literally between videos of somebody, you know, somebody's kitten rolling around and that's cute. And, right. you know, somebody, this person just got cancer and you see the people crying and like there's stuff that's pulling and trying to tailor it, different emotions. Right. So you're, you're, you, you have to bring something that's going to engage, engage yeah. because everything else kind of just gets pushed through. Well, I think now you speak to what I see happening with reality TV mm -hmm. these days where, you know, at first the outrageous wasn't as outrageous. It was outrageous and it got our attention. Mm -hmm. uh, the Bachelor comes to mind. Mm -hmm. um, Survivor, Jersey Shore. Jersey Shore. Yep. And now I see where it's gotten so schlocky. I don't watch a lot of TV, yeah. to be honest with you, but I see, you know, I see the advertisements that they use, they sure. use social media to, to promote their product, obviously. Sure. It's amazing to me. You use the word desensitized. We've been desensitized as a society to the point where they've got to get so outrageous that you look at it and go, like, who the heck would ever watch this? Garbage? Yeah. It's right? amazing that I was thinking about this last week. The same day we spoke. You have to be careful when you start to create your content because you're programming your audience. And if you're if you're gonna if you program your audience for good quality wholesome content, right? That's what they'll expect. Right. If you program your con your audience for outrageous content, diminishing returns. Yeah, no question. So you might start out in the first video, you you prank somebody. Right. In the second video, the same prank doesn't work. Yeah. No, I think you're right. It has a shelf life. It has a shelf life. Yeah. It, it, you 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 don't get the same result from the same thing. You know, you, you smack somebody in the face. Wow, that video guy, look at him smacking this yeah, guy. I, you can't smack the guy the next time. You got to actually knock him out the next time. That's a fact. That's, you know, that's so, such a mouthful, Double D, because... They always want more and more, and how, how deep are you going to go with that? And at some point, the reservoir runs dry. I mean, there is no more content that... What, you are you going to kill somebody? To yeah. And you said it perfectly. It's the law of diminishing returns. At some point, that audience disappears, and they shift their focus to something else yep. that's going to get their attention. So one of the other things I see is that um, ultimately, you know, when we talk about your content being like life and the challenges and the failures and the successes, absolutely, that is going to go on forever and ever. It's as old as the good book, mm -hmm. and it's going to go on until the end of time. 100%. And so that sells 100% because people need the help out there these days. Definitely. Tough times, as we both know. I mean, there's a lot of the have, have not issues that are, are plaguing us right now, but life and struggles and challenges and ways to get yourself out of a, of a, um, a position where you're you're feeling like you're under it yep. is always going to be, I think, a, it's going to connect. It's going to be something that's going to engage your audience. Amen. And people are going to want to listen to. So. Amen.